This is Southern Cross News with Rachel Williams. Good evening everyone. Two men remain on the run tonight after firing more than 10 rounds from a high-powered rifle into a Hobart bar. No one was injured in the incident at Pablo's Cocktails and Dreams Bar, but police believe it was a targeted attack. This door evidence of a dramatic shooting. Two men remain at large tonight after using a high-powered rifle to shoot at the Hobart venue's front door. 20 people inside at the time. Thankfully, nobody was injured because this had the potential to be a really nasty incident. The shooting took place just after midnight. Those nearby shocked by what they heard. I've used firearms a bit in the past and it had a, you know, this got a sort of a unique distinctive sound. The succession with the, how quickly they happened as well it was very, very quick. I could see the red lit up district where the night mass was on and I just thought, oh, something's going on down there. But I wasn't, it did sound like gunshots, but I thought it could just have been part of the revelry. Offenders fleeing on foot, heading north along Harrington Lane, then back onto Harrington Street and east along Bathurst Street. Police finding the weapon and ammunition nearby, saying they do not believe it was a random attack. Investigations to date strongly suggest the incident was a targeted attack directed at the bar. Tasmania police arriving here at the scene just 60 seconds after the initial report. 14 units working quickly to lock down the area and ensure all patrons were safe. Obviously some of those people there were, were quite shaken. Police now looking for a man up to 40 years old with red facial hair, 173 to 182 centimetres tall, of muscular build and wearing all black. A description of the second man is not yet available. We're following a number of specific lines of inquiry at this stage. Um, and our investigation's ongoing, but we don't have anybody in custody at this stage. The street was closed for several hours after the attack, police remaining on the scene today. Anyone with information is asked to contact Crime Stoppers. Michelle Wisby, Southern Cross News. Police are investigating a suspicious house fire in the Launceston suburb of Ravenswood overnight. The residence in Hazelwood Parade was extensively damaged. No one was home at the time of the blaze. The cause of the fire has not been determined and investigations are continuing. Anyone with information is asked to contact Crime Stoppers. Well, Federal Human Services Minister Dan Tian has used a Braddon by-election visit to spruik a Hobart-based welfare to work program. A $4 million grant to the Brave Foundation is aiming to support teenage parents by helping them gain work skills, including driving lessons. Minister Tian says around 80% of young parents are currently receiving welfare payments by their mid to late 20s. This trial is about helping single parents be able to get off welfare and into work in a meaningful way, in a way which enables them to still care for their children. The opposition says the announcement sounds like an extension of a Labor plan. This is coming from Brett Whiteley and the Liberal Party that wanted young people to live on nothing for six months while looking for work. People cannot take anything seriously that this government says. The federal government says the trial is being paid for using its $96 million Try, Test and Learn fund. Two years after raging floodwaters crashed into the Tamar Rowing Club, a new facility housing over a century of memorabilia has opened its doors, today marking a special milestone for the club, which was nearly forced to fold when the extreme weather event hit. On higher ground following the freak flooding of 2016 is a future-proof Tamar Rowing Club. Costing just under a million dollars, the new facility symbolises the spirit of a club facing ruin. We were discussing whether to move forward or wind up our club. The floods wiped out the original low-lying clubhouse. It was a sitting duck left stranded as water gushed down Cataract Gorge next door. The club banded together, securing donations and salvaging nearly 150 years of history, which is now proudly back on display. A strong club we are and a strong membership we have and every one of the 110 members put their best foot forward and worked very hard to make this happen. One of the club's top young prospects says rowers stuck by the club during the rebuild. Obviously it's been, uh, been hard without it. We've had to confine to the one half of the shed and do all our training out of there instead of being able to use the full area. But 
surprisingly it hasn't. We've, uh, we've still been pretty successful on and off the water. After recently enjoying success in the Australian under-23 team, Henry Yule is now training to make the open age squad. Through adversity everyone's come through and lifted up and people have become really passionate about the club. And it moves us forward for another 150 years. Tom Johnson, Southern Cross News. The dark and thrilling musical Sweeney Todd is coming to Hobart. The cast today offering a sneak peek of the popular play telling the infamous tale of a barber seeking revenge. With just days left until opening night, the actors say they're ready and excited to perform to an audience. The aroma enriching the breeze is like nothing compared to its succulent sauces that gourmets among you will tell you of course. For everyone it's a tale of revenge, there's a lovely love story in there as well, there's lots of great music, there's something for everyone in it. The musical will show at Hobart's Playhouse Theatre from June 28. There were bizarre scenes in the MPL overnight, with a banned Zebras coach going to extraordinary lengths to watch his team tackle Kingborough. But his absence from the bench proved no distraction for the Hobart team, as they went on to record an impressive 4-3 victory. Gabriel Marcash has been banned from entering venues for five weeks while he serves his suspension for poor conduct towards officials. So the controversial coach has found an innovative solution, donning a ninja mask and mounting a ladder to watch from beyond the boundary of KG5. But his ninja skills clearly weren't up to scratch after he was snapped by soccer journalist Walter Pless. He says it's one of the stranger moments of his 40-year career. I've uh, seen coaches who have been banned from ground standing on an adjoining pitch and watching the game there. But uh, on top of a ladder with a balaclava or some face covering, no, I haven't seen that. He was busy relaying instructions to one of his injured squad members who was then transferring it to the coaching bench. It's not the first time Mark Hash has courted controversy or come under fire for remonstrating with refs. An outburst in 2017 cost him his job at Kingborough. He's very passionate about the game and I think as he gets older uh, and more mature that, uh, yeah, he'll be OK. His not-so-subtle presence behind the wire doing little to distract his players. Zebras defeating the Lions in a four-goal to three shootout. It was just something new what, what we're not used to and um, I think we just need to um, I, especially us, experience and all the players, we need to step up. In other matches, Launceston City were emphatic winners against Olympia. Tyler Fisher booting a pair in the 4-1 victory. At Valley Road, Devonport repeated its Lacka Seljak Cup performance with another 1-0 victory against South Hobart. And Northern Rangers collected the points against Clarence. Andrew McCarthy, Southern Cross News. In the Seaball, the North West Thunder has lost, lost both its matches on the road, while the men's Hobart Chargers side and the Launceston Tornadoes each enjoyed wins last night. But the closest match of the round was a one-point nail-biter taken out by the women's Hobart Chargers side over Canberra. A neck-and-neck -neck contest in the nation's capital had the Hobart Chargers under pressure. The visitors were down by two points in the low-scoring contest with less than 45 seconds to go. But a fast-footed Kathleen Shear delivered the equaliser in the final 30 seconds of play. The Capitals had a chance to win it, but missing the basket, the Chargers brought the ball back into its offensive half. A final foul as Shear went for the basket put a win within reach. She missed her first attempt but sunk the second, giving the side a one-point victory. Overnight, Eddie Ockenden made his first appearance as Kookaburra's captain. The Tasmanian played out an intense three-all draw against Belgium in the Champions Trophy opening round. The side plays again on Monday against Pakistan. And tonight, local paddler Daniel Watkins enters the kayak slalom semi-final in the sport's first World Cup of the season. Today, he was eliminated from the canoe slalom semi-final after touching a gate and incurring a penalty. Knew I had a few touches, wasn't really sure how that would stack up, but uh, in the end I think my roar in that second run was right up there with the fastest roar times from the first run, so yeah, that's promising. Good evening. Some showers about the west, south and south east throughout the day today. Hobart up to 12 degrees. Launceston with a state's top of 15. That was shared with St Helens. Burnie and Devonport both 13. Elsewhere, Cressy, Flinders Island, Campania and Smithton all 13. Scottsdale and Ouse 12, 11 at Strawn, 10 at Sheffield. A low of zero overnight for Lyawenit but up to 5 degrees today. On the satellite, scattered low cloud over the entire state other than the northeast coast. A large 
large amount of stable low level cloud in the bight today and over southern WA due to that high pressure system. Tomorrow not much change still under the influence of the high although a surface trough will move to the southwest of Tasmania over the state and then move off into the Tasman Sea. West to southwesterly winds at 15 to 25 knots about the south swells to 3 to 4 metres in the west and south decaying to 2 to 3 metres by the evening. No warning, so on to Monday's forecast. A possible light morning shower for Hobart, 14. Showers easing for Dover, a shower for Ooze, 12. A mostly sunny day for Launceston, 15. Devonport, 15 also. And Scottsdale, a fine day, 13 degrees there. A fine day for Burnie, 15. Showers easing for Strawn, 13. Stanley, 14. In the East St Helens, 14. Mostly sunny for Swansea, 15. And Ross, a top of 13 degrees. On to Tuesday and showers about the west, mainly about the coast. Fine elsewhere with some patchy morning frost. Showers again on Wednesday in the west but fine elsewhere. And finally Thursday, a fine day with areas of morning frost with some possible showers about the north later on. Capital cities now in a sunny 32 on the way for Darwin, Brisbane 21, Sydney sunny in 17, Canberra sunny after a frosty start 12, Adelaide 14, Melbourne fine and 13, Perth mostly sunny with a top of 20 degrees. And it's a cloudy 9 degrees in Hobart right now, Launceston 9 also, Devonport 9 and clear. And Rach, a reminder the Give Me 5 for Kids telethon is on Tuesday night, giving everyone the chance to call and donate. Yes, I'll be here waiting for everyone to call and give me your cash for such a great cause. Well, that's all your news for now. Thanks for joining us. I'm Rachel Williams. Good night.